Hello, beautiful souls. How are you doing today? It's 8-18-2024. It may feel like a completely different month or day to you. Depends on how time is dragging you through the woods like a Sasquatch. <clears throat> and I mean that because there are times where we can feel it dilate and it just goes to a sloth's pace. And then other times it's sped up. And we really appreciate that source you can do more of that if you like anyway today is a big a big uh video for me because um I have been asking my guides and my spirit team which are the best of the best um for guidance specific guidance on how to grow my channel and how to grow my business at violentlotusenergy.com and recently, um, the Rainbow Guardians have all leveled up in different roles. And so I too was given um, some new guidelines on what I should do, things that I could probably do fairly easy if I was willing to change and adapt and do some different things. And so after pondering a, a bit and it totally resonated within my being, I decided to give this 100% like I try to do most things. So um, today is going to be the first of many, many series that I do. And these series will entail daily videos from yours truly, Healing Disclosures with Nicole. And hopefully it helps to really um, not only clear up some of the gaps in all things like ascension and shadow work and um, new earth and our guides and our ascendant masters and all the things that some of the population are really just waking up to. So I really felt the call uh, energetically from the collective. And so that's the part that really resonated with me to put more out there in a greater frequency so that Remembering back, if you can recall, if you've been on this journey for a minute, um, when you first wake up, you're ravenous for truth, right? You can't watch enough and put your hands on enough aha moments. It sort of becomes a little bit of an addiction. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, you get tired and you realize that you gotta, you gotta live life, but in the beginning, which a lot of people find themselves at now, there's a, a huge quest for truth. They're very thirsty for that. And the frequency is higher now. And so there's a lot more people receptive to it and in a space where that message can be received. It's literally comes down to the frequency. You know, the frequency gap is closing for some and widening for others. And that's just how it is. Um, and so for those that are newly awakened and uh, newly coming to terms with things that we may have been um, dealing with day in and day out for the last couple of years, this is all new to them. And so the, the section of videos that I start to produce starting today, it is going to be more in depth and it's going to be a little smaller chunks, I believe, but also very deep. And I will say that the gloves are off. Um, my guidance to speak about things in the beginning, I was not given permission to talk about a lot of stuff that was actually happening in our day-to-day -day energy lives and our real lives. But now, because so much has transpired and needs to transpire, uh, I have permission to speak about all of it. And so... I'm really only going to be held by the guidelines of certain platforms and how they interpret things. But again, the truth doesn't always come in a pretty package. In fact, I challenge you to say that the truth is usually pretty ugly and you got to dig down and get all the dirt and the mud and the muck off of it. And then whenever you find it, it's golden. So don't ever stop searching for the truth because it really is worth your time and effort. So... Without any further ado, I want to remind you, violetlotusenergy.com is the platform for all of our energy services. We have a ton of stuff on there, adding new services all the time. 
I work with a staff of six to seven energy, quantum energy healers and mediums, and they're all soul family and they're all very well vetted by the divine and myself. And so I do want you to stop by and check it out, see what resonates, see what your soul's calling you to do. Know that the QET session is the first thing you really need to do before you can have any of the activations or the very specific sessions, but that's easy peasy. Just book your QET and then book the next thing that you want. And it won't be delivered to you until we have a conversation and higher selves agree that you're ready for it. Everything is divinely guided. And I take that very seriously. Also, uh, Truth Resonates podcast drops every Friday morning at 6 a.m. Um, Metatron was having me take a little bit of a break from that, doing it every other Friday. This Friday, um, I'm picking up another drop. And then I'm going to do weekly again on that too. So super busy on the production front and stepping into uncharted territory with that, but it's exciting. And I, I always learn and I'm always willing to learn. And then I surprise myself on some things I didn't think I was capable of doing. So it's, it's a, uh, I'm happy for you to join me on this journey and I'm happy to help you if you uh, want it in your ascension and clearing your energy and developing your spirit team connections. Um, that really has been invaluable for so many people. And the the downloads and connections you get from your own contacts are priceless. So I have was given a very long list of topics to start doing uh, videos on. And so um, asked my higher self out of that very long list, what's the first thing that needs to be covered for the collective? What's the highest and best good, which is really how I go about my day-to-day -day decisions on what I'm going to do, because we all have many, many choices. And I don't know about you, but for me, just going on, you know, off the cuff, my brain, my ego guiding me never really worked out so well. So I always check in with my higher self and get guidance and then um, see what resonates the best on what I should do. So the answer was, drum roll, please, covering the Sophia Dragon Tribe. Now, I was introduced to <clears throat> Mother Sophia as a divine god back when I was first QET'd. And I had read about Mother Sophia in the Sophia Code all rights to Kaya Ra, and that had a different meaning for me whenever I read it the first time, and then I went and read it the second time, and then I've read it several times since, because I developed a personal connection and a, a daily conversation, daily guidance with Mother Sophia, and that came about because, long story short, um, I really realized that the path I was on, which was as a registered nurse, bedside nurse, critical care, was literally ripping my soul out. I was a part of a Luciferian system and the work that I was doing was not in alignment <clears throat> with my soul. And so it felt like trauma every single day. And when I made the decision after my guidance was received, to pivot away from that career and put my faith in Father, Mother, God, which is source creator, Mother Sophia, that they would provide a way for me to live and be successful in ways that I had never even fathomed. And it's been very, very true. <laughs> very true. This is the same time I was getting guidance to start a YouTube channel. And that voice was source creator. And I kept saying that message is not for me. That message just cannot be for me. Like it just can't be. And then um, before long, <laughs> the message felt like a knock on the head. I was going to receive the message. It was getting louder and louder and louder. And then, you know, one day it came in, this is for you. I know exactly who this message is for and it is for you. You are to spread biblical, celestial, divine, spiritual truth on YouTube your soul family will find you that way. And I was floored, floored, but I had enormous faith. I had enormous faith. Some of the things that I had faith in, in my past 
No one believed, but I, it had been proven to me time and time again. And that was the one constant. And so I had to go with my faith and I had to go with my gut and turn my brain and my ego off. Cause my ego was screaming loudly. You cannot do this. Like you are not meant to be on a TV screen on a video with a microphone and look at me, you know, I followed my, my guidance. It took a little courage. It took more courage in the beginning than it does right now. And a whole lot of faith. The faith piece has grown exponentially because when you have true faith and you're not trying to micromanage the divine miracles happen every day. And I'm eternally grateful and I live in that space of love, forgiveness, and gratitude. It is what gets us all through an inefficient, chaotic time. So the Sophia Dragon Tribe, I want to say, when Kaya um, put out her book, published her book, became super, super successful, she did a registered trademark on the Sophia Dragon Tribe. But I've talked to Mother Sophia several times, and I will cover how that name came about. That's not a name that Kaya developed on her own. And, um, and so living and operating in the fifth dimension consciousness, I honor her work, but it's not her name. And so I'm not taking the name either as mine. I give the name credit to the creator of the name, which is mother Sophia. And, um, and we'll just go with there. So some of the information I, I have, I've channeled directly from these Ascendant Masters. Some of the, the information's from the Sophia Code. The Sophia Code is not something that I have read and put down and never picked back up again. Um, it has become a resource for me in times where I've been guided to read or reread certain things. And it literally, maybe a month apart, there's a different meaning that comes from that same section of the book. And so I really can't say enough good things about it. Then I had some other texts that I've used. Um, Kyle Gray did a book about the Ascendant Masters. And a lot of that information is his channeled information. But again, it's very valid. It's very real. It's authentic. And I definitely do take that as something that should be discoverable, you know, and that's the thing about, um, clearing your energy and opening up that ability to have these conversations is the truth of the conversation that you have with your guides. It's not to be invalidated by anyone else. It's not for me or anyone else to tell you, you did not have that conversation. What we simply do in our crew is we just confirm the information came from who you thought it did and that the message is what you thought you received. The meaning of that message is different for different people. It's not for us to determine that. And that that's not what we do. We're just simply in a very safe, benevolent way um, through guidance, through our clear abilities that we're all born with. We have now been able to uh, allow them to fully come online because our energy is cleared and we make we take go through painstaking efforts to keep our energy clear. So that we can have these conversations because we know now that just because you find something in a book doesn't mean it's accurate. I mean, the Rockefeller paradigm of producing the books, being the actual publisher of the books that have long educated us from preschool to post-college all comes from one source and it's all very manipulated so that's just one example there's a lot of examples out there of people that truly trust a certain series of books or a single book come to find out there's just not a lot of truth in the book but it's just popular and that's where discernment comes in so I want you to really, really <clears throat> give this information a fair and equal opportunity to resonate within your soul. In order to do that, you're going to have to shut your, your ego up and you really want to dive in. If you really feel pulled to information, it's usually because your soul is guiding you there. 
And if you really feel like listening to something is a chore, you should turn it off. That's your soul telling you that's not for you. Or it could be that it, the, fr the frequency of the information being received is such a mismatch that it's very uncomfortable for you, in which case you're not there yet. It might resonate with you later on. It may never, but that's how you discern what is for you and what is not for you. Now, I'm going to go through some information about the Sophia Dragon Tribe, and it's mostly background information, and I did have to write a lot of it down because I didn't want to get it wrong. And so I'm going to be referring to some of my notes, and then some of it's going to just be things that I know that I've channeled. So the Sophia Dragon Tribe, 30,000 years of hidden Sophia lineages on Earth seeded a blueprint within humanity's collective memory for those lineages to interface and work together as a unified field of Sophia Christ consciousness. Now, you may hear about Christ consciousness all the time, and most of the time it's in reference to Jesus, or when they say Christ, that's who they mean, the Christ, and they mean that as Jesus. And so that's a whole nother topic for a different day. But I'm here to let you know that Father, Mother, God, Source, Creator, Mother, Sophia is the Christ. And Yeshua took that incarnation to embody the way, the teachings that were long developed before that from Father, Mother, God, and also shared with many other ascendant masters prior to Yeshua. He was just one of them, and he was very important. <clears throat> I'm not minimizing his incarnation on earth because it was very important. The Sophia code is a divine blueprint that provides key code transmissions for unifying wide demographics of human humanity. Mother Sophia's ascendant master high council represents seemingly isolated spiritual movements, but it is in their life stories. So it's in those energy beings, those souls, incarnations in life that allows them to be of service in ascension. It allows them to assist another's embodiment of the Sophia code because they lived it. Their interconnected embodiments provide a mirror in your souls, many lifetimes of self mastery and training that seemingly separate key code transmissions of the Sophia code. <clears throat> Mother Sophia has chosen and ordained the specific ascendant masters from many hidden lineages to show you the way ahead, to mentor you in a modern mystery school of your daily life. Mother Sophia presents these ascendant master teachers as her high counsel for activating the Sophia code within you and awakening the sovereignty in all of humanity. They speak... Mother Sophia's living transmission through unified collective voice as individual key code mentors. Mother Sophia ordained this high council to be forever known as the Sophia Dragon Tribe. Again, the name comes from Mother Sophia when she created this. She's the creatrix of all things, of all life. <clears throat> These Ascendant Masters are committed to mentoring you in ways you have never experienced before. And man, isn't that the truth? So, the Golden Age of Miracles. Have you heard about the Golden Age of Miracles? Man, it's exciting. So, the High Council, aka the Sophia Dragon Tribe, says this. The golden age is a cycle of time which quantum evolutionary leaps become accessible to large populations of humanity seeking to embody the Sophia Christ consciousness. The Sophia dragon tribe serves all ancient and future golden ages. Golden ages occur on a cycle. This isn't something we came up with. It's cyclical. It's happened many times. <clears throat> At certain evolutionary junctures, we return as a highly visible guiding light council to catalyze golden ages on earth. So 
Each time the cycle of the golden age is about to come around, these ascendant masters of the high council have come in to assist. As many of you are already aware, humanity is now being prepared to participate in a new golden age cycle here on earth. The dawning of this new golden age cycle is unlike any other. This revolutionary age begins with an unusually high volume of incarnated master souls <clears throat> that are ready to surf the quantum wave with you. You are now walking earth with many advanced souls that have traveled great distances across the cosmos to be by your side, initiating the global awakening. Remember that your practice as a living master is to recognize, behold, and bless the masters that walk beside you in this great endeavor, both seen and unseen, regardless of outward appearances. Your starseed brothers and sisters are dressed up or dressed down to play their chosen roles in this riveting chapter unfolding as the precursor to the next golden age of miracles as countless miracles will be the result of numerous master souls converging consciously and unified as a global ascension community so i tell you whenever i started this i was just me my earthly body my earthly name my earthly life with a really strong desire an unquenchable thirst for biblical truth, that was re was really driving me. I was raised Catholic and uh, really was very independent, very independent thinker. And in seventh grade, I was kicked out of catechism because I wouldn't let the boys abuse me and stood up for myself. And the nuns punished me for that. And, uh, you know, kudos to my mother because she supported me not being bullied and not being abused. And so I never went back. I had a still a longing for the relationship with quote unquote God. So because I was not allowed back because I wouldn't allow boys to abuse me, that just really motivated my, my desire to have a true authentic relationship with God. And so it carried on throughout my entire life. I really don't know of a time where I did not feel within my being that my faith was very strong, but I never recognized another religion as mine after that. I think early on, I really knew that religion was man-made because I could see that there was so much judgment and shame and blame and guilt. And that just doesn't feel like the relationship that I had developed with God. It was loving. It was nurturing. It was not judgmental. And so the more I felt that connection, the less I felt drawn to quote unquote church. And that's just my, my way. That was just the path that brought me to this down moment. So when I, you know, fast forward through my life, there was a lot of trauma. There was a lot of drama. <laughs> There's a lot of things that is probably not very unlike your life. And that's just kind of how we, 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 the soul beings, S O U L E D beings that incarnated on this planet in this lifetime, we contracted really tough lives because we needed to get those boxes checked so that we could transcend that earthly life and really start to do the mastery work of the starseeds. So the starseed family that I realized that I was a part of, that, that source creator and Mother Sophia gave me the mission to locate via the frequency of my voice became everything. It became the motivating factor for all that I do. And it still is to this day. The, the ones that I contacted that contacted me in the physical and that I have met with and hugged and kissed and, and really gone down the rabbit holes of this journey and helped evolve and learn and cry and grow, evolve in a way that is expansive, not, um, 
not anything less than beautiful. I really feel such a strong connection to those souls because we are family. And it's the thing that I was missing this entire life. I really felt it. And you may have felt that too. You may have felt in within your own earthly family that there was a lot missing. And it's because you're missing your soul family. And even though my soul family is scattered all over the planet, uh, we do come together and energetically we set intentions to spend time together every single day and it's beautiful. And so I highly encourage you to tap into that. If it's popping into your head, even if it's not me, my soul family, uh, it could be another and it could still be calling you very strongly and it, it pays off in ways that cannot be adequately describe because frankly our earthly language is subpar to the higher consciousness interweavings of the relationships that we can have and we do have and so I'm going to now go through a little bit of my own experiences with the dragon tribe the Sophia dragon tribe and how they work with the divine feminine embodiment so the Sophia Dragon Tribe, as we connect these powerful divine feminine ascendant masters, <clears throat> I was introduced to the majority of them via the Sophia Code. Some of them I had not heard of before or so vaguely that I really wouldn't say I had a knowledge of them. But when I was reading the Sophia Code the first time, I was not clear and it was powerful in spite of the fact that I was not clear, it was so powerful. Like I, I felt the clairsentient in my body telling me that information was for me. Well, then the second time I read it, I had been cleared and I had massive downloads and, and energetic connections and messages come in from these amazingly powerful, beautiful divine feminine ascendant masters in my life. And in the beginning, all I did was cry because their energy was just so strong and loving and nurturing and compassionate all at the same time. And it was overwhelming. And over time, like with most things, um, I got, I got more used to it and I, I still don't take it for granted. I love every single encounter and every single transmission that I get with them and that I get to share with them, but it doesn't. <laughs> usually knock me to my knees anymore it's still very powerful though they're a powerful group and they assembled and were assembled by mother sophia so that they could you know work together like she says they represent different areas of the world but their 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 constant is the sacrifice that they made in their in their incarnated lives and how that was able to transcend them into ascension into the ascendant master status that they held. So Mother Sophia uses the name <clears throat> to convey the transmission and truth and totality. I fully recognize Mother Sophia trumps any man-made systems in using the Sophia Dragon Tribe. I use SDT a lot as an abbreviation for Sophia Dragon Tribe. And you may hear me go in and out of that as I speak. The High Council of Ascendant Masters, AKA SDT, remember as an Ascendant Master is great soul that once walked the earth. So these are all beings that had lives on this planet, just like you and me had difficult lives, they had traumatic lives, they had lives that ended in trauma and, um, you know, negative dark deeds. And they came back and they did it again. And they came back and they did it again because it's part of the mission. It's part of the same mission that we've been on. So whenever the Sevilla Dragon Tribe souls incarnated, many accomplished a lot in their lives in service to earth and in service to other star systems, leaving a legacy of love that transcended their physical incarnations. The Sophia Dragon Tribe shares multi-ray light transmissions with pearls of wisdom teachings, and we share that pearlescent white, platinum, gold, and silver light rays to awaken the cellular soul remembrance. The light 
is what helps activate the the blueprint in our DNA. It's the light codes because it's crystalline that needs to be activated. You ever shine a light on a, on a crystal and you see how many fractals of light come out of it? That's what you need to think about. So the divine feminine Christos teaching of the Sophia consciousness is led by these following divine feminine ascendant masters. Isis, known as she of a thousand names. She is known to have birthed the golden age. She encourages you to claim your divine inheritance, claim your sacred sexuality and sensuality and power and claim your sovereign divinity. And her region uh, is known as Egypt, although she connects with beings all over the planet. Hathor, known as she of a thousand voices. Legacy of love on earth. Power of every syllable spoken clearly through the throat chakra. Combines the electrostatic union with your multidimensional self. And she also covers the region known as Egypt. Green Tara. She of a thousand stars. She's from the Sirius star, star nation. And works to ascend through the Sirius star nation. Eco ascension with Gaia, Earth, Soul, Huna Matea. And the liberating power of Am Tari to Tari to Soha. She covers the areas on the planet known as India and Asia. Then we have Mother Mary, who really prefers to be known as Ascendant Master Mary. Um, but it's real hard to find any um, any reference to her like that. And so so that we, we know who we're talking about because there's a lot of Marys. We, I'm going to go with Mother Mary. She's known as she of a thousand roses. She's a mentor fulfilling a prophecy, teaching of the rose, walking the way, capital T, capital W, the way, following the voice of heart. And she covers the area known as Middle East and Europe. Magdalene. She's known as she of a thousand angels. Mentor for spiritual revolution. Magdalene public ministry. Seeding the divine, divine feminine blueprint to your future mentor or angelic embodiment. And she covers the area known as Middle East and Europe as well. Kuan Yin. She is known as she of a thousand waters. Her healing modality is water. Loving yourself with compassion is essential for ascension. Kuan Yin's compassion grew from trauma. The power of unconditional love support is softened with water. And receptivity of awakening the divine feminine Christ embodiment with the path of Karuna compassion. And she covers the areas known as Asia and India as well. And... Last but certainly not least, white buffalo calf woman. She of a thousand white clouds and thundering beings is also my soul grandmother. She seeds her prophetic lineage, prophesies return of the divine feminine medicine, and she covers the area known as the Americas. This was her land long before we were here. And, um, Her energy is really great. She comes in with jokes <laughs> and she comes in with strength and she comes in with wisdom and she always wants to know what's happening with her babies and she's always right there and I just love her dearly. Now, I have a real special um, relationship with Kuan Yin and I'll cover that shortly and then of course white buffalo calf woman she's my grand and mother sophia i'll cover my relationship with her as well it's daily and maggie and isis 
And then as I was preparing to do this, um, I went over some of the stuff for Hathor. Now, I remind you, I've read the Sophia Code three times cover to cover and then numerous times just going to look for things as a as a reference. And I tell you, I read things in Hathor's key code section. It was like I had never read it before because again, the message resonates when your frequency is at a point to receive it. There's no other way to explain it. And man, I was really uh, resonating with a lot that I was reading from Hathor. And then she came in last night with some messages. She's super excited that um, that that section, her section is going to be covered. And, and I know why. And I didn't ever pick up on it before um, because I wasn't ready to, I guess. But her abilities and gifts are on the spoken word and the syllables. I mean, down to the very minute um, sounds, every, every intention with every syllable, because it's how we manifest. And in, in working through clearing the throat chakra and understanding the role of your throat chakra. And it was just blew my mind yesterday. And so I'm glad that she came and con made contact with me last night and um, I'm excited to work with her too. So um, while you may be hearing about these divine feminine for the first time, um, please, I, I definitely do extend the invitation to pick up your copy of the Sophia code and uh, whether it's ebook or physical, whatever your preference is, and um, start to get to know these divine feminines because they are literally been brought together to represent the entire world because every single woman on the planet can learn from them. They have life experiences that relate to so many of us and not just one, many of them do, but typically you'll be drawn to one specific divine feminine um, ascendant master for a reason. And that's for you to decide. And I would want you to miss out on that. It's a great experience. So that's my spiel. So my first experience with SDT was while reading the Sophia code and it was powerful many months before my QET session. Like I said, I, I remember crying a lot and I felt in each key code um, activation that I did, I set my, my altar and I set, you know, I, I made, it was very, very um, spiritual and powerful each time. And there, there wasn't one that I could get through without crying um, the first time or the second time. And then the third time I did it, I was really feeling the, the influx of the energy and the power. So I had worked through the shadows. I was no longer uh, crying my eyes out and I really felt embodiment of the power. I felt connected to the first divine feminine energy of the, at the first time. And it just, cat it was a catalyst for that journey like i knew that every time i would get further and further down the road i was going to go back to the sophia code and i was going to go back to those key codes because they'd mean different things for me in different times of my journey so i had many thousands of negative distortions that were cleared whenever i had my qet session and immediately because that's the way it works you're able to connect. You're able to connect in a way that you can connect through your higher self and meditation is very su super successful and your abilities come online. So right after I was cleared and I started meditating, I was, I'm clairvoyant and claircognizant and a measure of clairaudient. And I started getting visions where before everything was just black. I, I was like, I was just capped off. And, uh, and I started immediately having connections to some of the divine feminines that I had felt a real pull to um, in the past. So I felt really super connected to Kuan Yin. And some months after my initial QET session, I was led, it was actually within, let me think about it. I think it was within, within 30 days. I think it was within a month. I was led to reread her section, her key code section of the Sophia code. And I did, I read it. And then I put the book down I went to bed, went to sleep. And the next morning when I woke up, I knew she had walked in. She walked in as a soul embodiment 
to give me access to her healing modalities and her um, gifts and her wisdom. And I immediately felt it when I woke up the next morning and there was a level of familiarity there. Not that I ever thought I was Quan Yin. I just knew that her soul energy felt really familiar to me. And there was a lot of push to remember my shamanic history. I've been incarnated several times as a shaman. And Mother Sophia had already imbued me with healing abilities as a quantum healer on the quantum scale. Um, and this was a huge soul growth for me because I had pivoted away from bedside nursing, unsure of what I was going to do with my life and how I was going to freaking survive. And within moments, I was giving, I was given downloads and, and upgrades and abilities to do remote quantum healing. Um, and that was the reward for my faith in believing that I would be taken care of, that I would be led, I would be provided for in a way that I could not fathom. And it certainly was. So once Quan Yin walked in, this whole new perspective of accessing wisdom opened up for me. I recall that I had been struggling to forgive <laughs> Um, some of the evil in the world that we deal with. And this is probably going to hit some of you square in the eyes. Uh, when we have to go through shadow work and go through our, our, our evolution and our growth, part of what we have to do is lose our judgment and to, to lose that pointing of the finger, that shame, blame, guilt, all that's low vibration. You got to get away from it. You got to heal in order to truly separate yourself from that energy. And I was okay with everything really, except the crimes against children. I, I, I couldn't get it. I couldn't in a heart space. I could not get to a place where I could offer forgiveness and allow that part to heal until Kuan Yin helped me. So Kuan Yin's lessons in her earthly incarnation allowed me to feel true compassion for the villains as well. And I definitely invite you to read the Sophia Code. And if you only read Kuan Yin's transmission, then you're going to do yourself a favor. From Kuan Yin, they did not know how to stop what they did the suffering it takes to wound a child in such a way as this or in any way at all is a suffering beyond logic <clears throat> as a wild animal bent over in maddening pain strikes without thought so too the human awareness possessed by suffering cannot stop itself from hurting others Suffering exacts such acts of pain upon others without reason, for suffering is the true definition of insanity. When I received that, now, mind you, I had already read it, and I had then read it again, and this was my third time. It opened a door to authentically forgive and allow me to move through that level of shadow work. And it was vital to get there. It was vital in order to move beyond the whole judgment, the vitriol, the vindictiveness, the egoic ideas of, ju of justice. And at the time, I was a part of a lot of different um, social spaces that that's all they talked about. That's all they talked about was the justice that needed to be carried out. And I mean, it was no less traumatic than what was happening than the, the events that they wanted to seek justice for. And so it was trauma begetting trauma. I didn't feel good. And so I really was able to understand another message that came through separate and, a, and apart from Kuan Yin came from source creator because I was asking for help in, in this hurdle. And source reminded me that there was a balance of karma taking place and that 
he gave me two examples. He said, many of the beings inside these military industrial complex type um, bio labs where they do hybridization experiments and really horrific things that many of those beings in there now were the soul energy bodies of the scientists before that they carried out these experiments in their lives prior and that was the karma that they incurred and the karma balance was that they incarnated and became experimented on and I was like whoa it never occurred to me it never occurred to me that that was a balancing karma thing I just always felt so bad for the victims and then realized that some of them like that was the ticket that they bought whenever their actions of their previous life got balanced with the karmic board. If you don't know what the karmic board is, I have videos about that too. Um, and it's in my book, Sold or Soulless. So the other example I was given was the same premise, but it had to do with um, the unauthorized movement of little people. And that some of those that are in children now, some of the souls that are in children now are souls that had been, that those acts had been done to in the past. And so they're balancing karma by being some of the little people that get unauthorized movement, if you know what I mean. And so, ah, uh, Ha moment for me. And then I then realized it came in as a download that a lot of the people that we see that we have empathy for, um, that's our soul contract. And it's not for us to intervene. And it also came in that a lot of them are NPCs. And a lot of them are organic portals. And that's how they, what they were created to do. Again, not for us to intercede. And so it, it really did help me get over the hump. Because I really had a hard time reconciling how a soul, a, a, you know, a soul being that had any contact with the divine, with any of the, the ascendant masters and source creator, Mother Sophia and the angels and archangels that I knew that I had felt in my life. How could they do this to another human being or even animals? And so it helped me. It helped me in, in major ways. And again, like I said, I, it was the third time I had looked at the words on that page and I reread them yesterday and it just feels different every time I read it. And it never, it's always more profound. <clears throat> the meaning, the meaning just tends to ascend as I ascend. So I felt my soul leveling up. I felt a level of alignment after that work that I put in where I let go of the judgment and I let go of the shame, blame, guilt, and all the things that was keeping my vibration low. And it helped me to really fully embody the quantum healer aspect of it because you really can't be or shouldn't be. Um having low vibrational dark thoughts, vindictive thoughts or whatever, whenever you're, you know, sending out healing, um, to other energy bodies. That's just my opinion. So as the months passed, I was contacted several times, um, by a few lovely divine feminine ascendant masters like Magdalene, Isis, and mother Mary Kuan Yin, mother Sophia was a daily part of my life because they were helping me um, understand the gifts I had been imbued with now to use for healing. And during some of those conversations with some of my soul sisters that I had come in contact with, so this is many, many months down the road, I had mentioned, um, you know, that, that cognitively I, I loved many people in my life, but for the last several decades, while I knew I was loved 
And while I sent love, I never felt loved. I didn't feel love in my heart. I didn't feel like I was able to really give love. And I didn't feel the return of, to receive love. And I was literally having this like text message conversation while I was in a salt bath. And in a matter of minutes, I started to feel this emotional energy around me, this loving, nurturing energy around me. And my soul sister, Aurelia said, the Sophia dragon tribe is coming to you. They're going to heal your heart. And I was like, shit, I got to get out of the bathtub. <laughs> and so as I was drying off and getting my clothes on, the, the tears were just increasing. And I mean, I was doing the ugly cry. And so I really, I made it into my room, laid in the bed and I felt so much big energy. It wasn't one. I knew it wasn't one. It was definitely more than one. And they, they formed a heart, a horseshoe around my bed and they gave me such strong, loving, compassionate, nurturing, true love that I felt the walls around my heart breaking down. And then they said, do you feel that? Do you feel that love? And I felt it in a way that I can't even relate it to anything else. And then they said, here's more. And they just. They loved on me. In a way that made me feel validated, that made me feel wanted and respected and um, valued. And it was so real. It, it was so real. I knew that had I not been laying in my bed, I would have dropped to my knees and been on the floor. It shook me. And it needed to. I needed that. So the overwhelming love that I felt from them in that now moment, it just really solidified for me that love, authentic love is the strongest force out there. It's the thing that makes you or breaks you. And when you feel like you're fighting a fight all by yourself and, and you're all alone, you're not, you're not alone. And that true authentic love. A lot of people question how you have a conversation with, with energy <laughs> or someone who's quote unquote transition dead, whatever, because the, the essence of who we are is the essence of who we are is our energy body. It's not what comes out of the, the avatar. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that a human being is telling you lies just because you're not talking to the, the, the essence of who they are. I'm saying that the true identity of who we really, really are when we break down all the egoic stuff and everything, the true essence of our energy body, that's what's felt. So when you talk to someone and you have a true connection with them, you're connecting to their energy. You're not connecting with them because they have blonde hair and blue eyes. You know, it's not a, that's why when people say, I love that, I love their spirit or I love their energy, they truly do. They're feeling that energy. So yes, I have felt their energy and I felt their love in an authentic way that I had not felt in this life since my twin flame died 30 years prior. So it showed me that I could feel and I would be taken care of and that energy shift of truly authentically feeling and having my heart chakra open and shook all the stuff that I had put in there to protect myself. It was closed down, even though I could open it and I could clear it, it would close back down. Cause that was like, it was in safe mode. It's like your, when your computer goes into safe mode, that's how it felt like, well, it's no longer in safe mode. <laughs> it is wide open. I feel it. I feel the hurt and I feel the love. And I feel everything in between. And I'm very grateful, very grateful for that because feeling is healing and being able to heal fully and completely is what life is about. 
So after that, I knew that the respect, the the love, the reverence, all the things that I felt from them was solidified in that love that they gave me. That that was a bridge that was created between me and them. And it was the entire Sophia Dragon tribe around in a horseshoe shape around my bed that came in, not because I asked them to, like, that's another thing. I didn't say at any point in time, I sure wish someone would come in and heal my heart. I was just sharing that um, I didn't really feel love like I thought I should. Sorry, got a little too emotional for a minute there. Okay, so they came in because the need was there. <laughs> and that's really how it works. If you're receptive to the healing that could come to you from the archangels, from the ascendant masters, from the divine feminine, divine masculine. I mean, there's so many men that would benefit from the healing that the divine masculines can give, but they don't even recognize it. And they make, it's almost like they feel less than a man if they, if they admit that these extremely powerful benevolent beings that came before them are existing in a real way and they just won't get out of their own way to heal and I just want to tell them all like you're not living I don't know what you think you're doing but this cross you think you have to bear it's not serving you in any benevolent way you know it's making life much much harder so I I awoke the next morning again and felt completely leveled up and gifts and clarabilities had been bestowed upon me that I had been, I had, I had been told I would have, it was not a, when I would have them, like, you know, someday soon you'll have access to blah, blah, blah. But because I had done the work and the healing, I, that's what opens up your access to things. So if you're wondering, like, how come I don't have this ability? And I was told I'd have this ability, but it hadn't happened yet. Well, you got to do the work to open the door for the ability to come through. Because if your being is full of shadows and your being is full of judgment and your being is full of shame and guilt and all the other things, there's no room for light abilities to come in and find a place to live because your, your energy body is full of crap. You got to move out of there. So what I learned... <laughs> in a very personal way was they offer so much just in their being, like in the words that they, that people have been able to channel and put in books and whatnot. But when you come to them with a specific need, like I did in a way, they just customize exactly what you need and you get it, you get it like full frontal, healing in a way that you've never had before and they use so much loving compassionate power and their energy is pure and it's just gone you're just healed and it's beautiful so when you're in a, a space a heart space a soul space where you're not letting your ego tell you these things are not real because they are and that allows you to accept the healing. There is no limit to what can be done. There really is no limit to what can be done. The limits come in place whenever you allow your brain and your mind to put limits where there shouldn't be. So knowing that the divine feminine ascendant masters of the Sophia dragon tribe wanted to help any divine feminine that stood in their power and wanted to gain healing and their abilities and whatnot I began working with them I felt called to work with them to develop sessions for women and men who had divine feminine souls because you know that's a thing and women who had divine masculine souls again that's a thing uh, that it could be delivered as activations as healings and very customized to the person which is what we started so to this very day, we have um, Kuan Yin works with us to do multiple different sessions. Maggie has a divine feminine activation that she works with Yeshua 
divine feminine and divine masculine activation. Isis has a activation. Um, Mother Sophia is a part of every single session I do because she's the reason why I have these abilities. Uh, Green Tara has sessions. Saint Germain. Saint Germain is my soul grandfather. And he has sessions with me. I work with him a lot. And then uh, Archangel Metatron is another soul grandfather. He is the twin flame to white buffalo calf woman. So him and Gran are with me all the time. And it's their guidance. You know, if if I'm right about something, boom, they're right there to say, yep, that's right. Follow that. Or it is right, but don't give your attention to that just yet. And they just keep me guided. And it's it's priceless. It is absolutely priceless. So the power of their their compassion and their nurturing love and their truly neutral but benevolent ways are so um interwoven in everything that I do. And I want in I, I went through all that so that you understood really where we come from. <laughs> so over the course of the next seven days, I'm going to cover each one of the divine feminine that are a part of the Sophia dragon tribe. And I'm going to go over their gifts and abilities, kind of what they focus on and what they work with me specifically to do to help you. And hopefully you will have a little bit better understanding about what these beautiful souls can bring into your life and help you connect and heal in your life. So stay tuned. Again, this is video one. And every single day this week, we'll have more videos. And every single day the following week, if all goes well, we'll have more videos on a different topic. So thank you. Remember, violetlotusenergy.com is where you can stop by. You can look through the activations that we have there. There are, are all listed there. There's a couple that I've just recently developed over the last couple of days that I haven't uploaded yet. I'm working out some kinks and, uh, but they'll, they'll be there shortly and understand that if you don't see what you feel is really going to address your issues, send me an email because based on your energy signature, your energy signature will tell me what you need. And obviously we have access to the wisest and most capable healers in the divine and we can custom build you the session that you need to help clear out the shadows so that you can really jump onto your ascension journey because that is what we're all here for so that we're all in the best spiritual place for the golden age of miracles i'll see you again next time take care